How about this atmosphere in the Twin Cities? The PAV top 10 teams, Nebraska and Minnesota, just about set to get it started. Let's get you the starting lineups powered by Unleaded 88. And we'll start with Nebraska here on the road. That means the first time for a couple of freshman starters that they have. We told you about Matty Kubik, the Libro freshman as well, and Kenzie Knuckles. But the news here at the outset, Audrey Flaw, is about the Minnesota starting lineup. Kylie Miller is back. She's been out the last eight matches. She had briefly been back, had a setback. She's back healthy, and she's going to give it a go. Yeah, and we'll see how she does for a setter. It's all about reps, reps, reps. We'll see if she's in a smooth rhythm tonight with her team. Senior setter, the transfer from UCLA, who was the starter in a 5-1 to begin the season. An unspecified injury throughout the year. You can read between the lines on how that has played out, and we'll see how she has that rhythm with her teammates. Yeah, it'll be critical as she's running a 6-2. Uh, we'll see that there's always three hitters in the front row for Minnesota setters coming from the back row to set. They wanted a gold out here in Minneapolis. Off we go with an ace serve from Nicklin Hames, the sophomore setter and one of the captains for the Huskers. Well, one of the great things that Hames does is this right here. She's got a tough serve. She picks her target, and then the serve just drops right in front of the passer. Hames off the tape this time. First swing goes to Adana Rollins, and she herself is back onto the court, back into the starting line. Yeah, we talk about how important the serve pass game is, and both of these teams will try to pick apart the weakest person on serve receive, or at least try to serve so that the middles cannot run their offensive route. CC McGraw serves down the line at Kenzie Knuckles. Rachel Kill Kelly is the DS, a true freshman for Minnesota. Bump set from Knuckles. Another swing for Jazz Sweet. And the point to Nebraska. Well, nice crafty hit there by Sweet. You know, she's a lefty, so when she hits on that left side, sometimes she has to work in some, um, you know, not so tough shots. She's got to get her feet to the ball. That time she just kind of wipes it down the line for a point. Junior, who's coming off a big match on Saturday in a closer than expected win over Iowa back in Lincoln. She had 18 kills. Well, you said, can you run the middle? And Miller does to Reagan Pittman. Yeah, if the pass is there, Miller will set Pittman, and she is deadly. Watch how she gets up in the air quick, and she's one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, when there's three hitters in the front row, every blocker has one hitter to be responsible for. So if Pittman gets the ball and she's one-on-one, -on -one, she will score. Stephanie Samity serves now. Aims on a back set for Sweet, terminating with power. Yeah, Sweet has been so good in big matches. We see this lefty, her strong side is that right side. Look how deep she is on her approach, and she sees a little hole in the block there, and she just finds it and rips it. At 4-17 in that match we mentioned over the weekend against the Hawkeyes. Rollins stepped in front of Kill Kelly. There's Aidi Miyabe, the junior from Japan. Dug in the back off a of Pittman swing. Back to Reagan Pittman. Coverage from the Gophers. Haynes sets Lauren Stibrins. And not in sync. And the point to Minnesota. Yeah, missed opportunity there for Nebraska. The great dig right up to Haynes. And that was just a misfire by Stibrins in the middle. Someone who John Cook has been able to lean so heavily on now the last three seasons. Donna Rollins with a service error. Donna Rollins stays in serve receive in the back court, and we'll see if Nebraska goes after her. Definitely want to get their setter setting from about the 10 foot line, which makes the options a little bit easier for the blocker to read. You set a 6 2. It's Bailey McMenamin now for Minnesota. Off the block, it's a point and a kill for Maddie Kubik, the freshman from West Des Moines, Iowa. And that's what Kubik does. She'll hit flat and high off the blocker's hands, and it's impossible for the backcourt to play that ball. Again, she doesn't play like a freshman. She's super composed out there, really relaxed. I've seen her play in some pretty big moments, and she's really done a good job. A 
Alexis Hart off the set from McMenamin. Now bump set from the gunslinger, Nick Lynn Haynes, and the block there for the Gophers. Point you. All right, from College Park, we now welcome you to Minneapolis. We are inside the PAV for a top 10 matchup. Number six, Nebraska, number seven, Minnesota. Alongside former Ohio State All-American, Audrey Flaw, Mike Monaco, our entire BTN crew. Audrey, for this huge match, two weekends left in the regular season. There's four teams, including these two, still with Big Ten title hopes. That's right, and this match is so important because each team here tonight wants to inch their way a little closer to that Big Ten title, so a lot on the line tonight. And Nebraska, of course, on Sunday goes to Wisconsin and plays, and that's another huge one for them. Penn State will host two huge matches next weekend as well that you can watch right here on BTN. But the big news early is that Kylie Miller is back for Minnesota. She has missed so much time due to injury this season. She is back, and Minnesota is going with a 6-2 after Miller just got cleared yesterday. How about the dig from CC McGraw, the Minnesota libero, and a point to the Gophers to pull within one. A great dig by McGraw to keep the ball off the floor. Outstanding play. Take a look at it here. Just laying out. And then a roll shot here. Typically, that is what Nebraska wants, but Stiverin's not able to play that first contact on defense. 6-5 Nebraska in the early going here in set one from the path. Stiverin's on the slide, her first kill. She had a hitting error earlier before we joined you. Yeah, take a look at Stiverin's speed here. The slide is so difficult to run, especially from that angle of the pass, but she does it perfectly because the pass was right up there at the net. So Nebraska in system, Stiverin's looking good. Look at those numbers, her last three matches hitting about 600 in that time. Haley Densberger serves for the Huskers. Kept up with one arm by McGraw. Schwarzenbach denies Hart. Well, for John Cook, he's got his team number six in the country, 22 and three overall, 14 and two in the Big Ten. You see the six match winning streak. They're tied for third with Minnesota. Those two teams trail Wisconsin and then Penn State. Miller is back, trying to run the middle with Taylor Morgan. Let's get into this with Kylie Miller. Yeah. How important is it for her to be back in the 6-2, and can she get the rhythm after missing so much time? Well, you know, setting, it's all about touch, and so, yeah, the touch is not going to be perfect. However, Huma Kutchen realizes that this team is better when she's on the floor, so they might take a little bumps here in the first set, but he really does think that this is... This is the way he wants to go in December with his team. So 6-2, she's on the court for the back three rotations. Uh, we'll see how she can do. Well, he needs a timeout after the ace serve for Nebraska with the Huskers up by five on the road. Really zoom in on those top four. So much at stake, like we said, coming down the stretch. Four matches, including tonight, that involve these top four teams with two of them playing one another. Yeah, it doesn't get much tighter than that. And the goal for those teams is to win the Big Ten title. So every match here on out is huge. A swing at the pin for Alexis Hart coming out of the Hugh McCutcheon timeout. Yeah, Hart doing a good job. Not only does she swing hard, but then her energy after she gets the kill, eye contact with her team, that's really important. That team chemistry on the court is big time for Miss Minnesota. When we talk about chemistry and the team for Minnesota, Hugh McCutcheon sat and chatted with us today after serve and pass and just said, it's quite remarkable what his team has done this season with all the moving pieces and all the changes to the lineup throughout the year. You know, it's a sign of good leadership from the top. I think Hugh McCutcheon finds a way to win. No excuses. He's come up with great lineups, uh, great alternatives, kids playing big on certain nights and then having a different role on other nights. And he also said to his team at the end of serve and pass, he huddled them up and he said, just to, to be calm and patient with the expectations as Kylie Miller gets back out there, they don't know exactly what to expect. Bump set from Miller for Adonna Rollins. 
Smith back healthy after missing last match over the weekend. Morgan in the middle clips Kenzie Knuckles, and the Gophers are within two. Yeah, you really have to take advantage of opportunities to swing. Nebraska letting a roll shot go over the net on a back row attack, and that's easily handled by Minnesota, a transition swing for a point. And so now John Cook wants a timeout. 10-8, Nebraska up by two in set one in Minneapolis. No mechanics mm -hmm. of athletes, and you can see that thoughtfulness that has gone into it. Swing out of the timeout for Callie Schwarzenbach, the sophomore from Missouri. Well, key right here. Take a look at the pass. It goes right up to Haynes, and she is past the middle area of the court, so she has to deliver an absolute perfect slide set for Schwarzenbach to kill. A good pass from Megan Miller, the sophomore DS. Trouble for Kill Kelly this time leads to a bump set. by Haynes and then Sweet got to it. Morgan. Whatever works for the Gophers. <laughs> well, what's working right now is if they're in a difficult situation, they seem to be just putting that ball in the right back corner, forcing um, the middle back for Nebraska to track the ball down and not able to play the ball up to the middle of the court. Minnesota within two again. Tough serve from CC McGraw. Nebraska has been out of system a lot here early, and they get the block to go up by three. Well, that was a big block by Sweet. The ball was not set to the pin. Sweet does a good job of seeing exactly where the approach is, gets up and over quick. See Callie Schwarzenbach coughing in addition to playing with a broken thumb. She's been playing with that for the last few weeks now. That's rough. Injured in practice at the beginning of the month. Miller steps in and finds Rollins, kept up by Haynes. She is fun to watch for a setter defensively, but Pittman on the overpass. Yeah, you've got to take care of the ball. Pittman, if it's just hanging at the net, she's going to take care of business. Stephanie Samity to serve. They go without a setter when she is serving. And it's a kill on the left side for Maddie Kubik, the reigning Big Ten freshman of the week. And Kubik takes a play, a bump set, and she just cleans it up by hitting smart. She doesn't go low seam. She goes right between the two blockers for the kill. John Cook said to us today she has got more comfortable in this role, and it's a huge role. Six rotation outside hitter in the Big Ten as a true freshman. Well, yeah, and people pick on her on serve receive, and it doesn't phase her one bit. How about the arm for Reagan Pittman, who's got three kills on five swings? Yeah, when they can get the ball to Pittman, just watch what she can do. Setter is off the net, 10-foot line, yet they manage to run the route, run it a little bit higher. Pittman scores. Now Rollins back to serve. Two point margin here in set one. Sweet with her third kill. You know, the attack for Nebraska, just so balanced. When you look at the front court, you've got Sweet, you know, you've got Cubic, you've got Stiverens, and there's just so many options. And so that's why the passing game is so important. If you're not limited to where you can put the ball, boy, the Minnesota's passing game is on. They look really good. A serve from Megan Miller, who coming into tonight had only had one ace in her last eight matches. Nebraska as a team has three already here in set one. Well, you can see how Adana there, she just kind of jerks at the ball a little bit. It goes off her arms. You can see another misplay by Adana Rollins in the backcourt. They're attacking her in serve receive right now. And it'll lead to another Hugh McCutcheon timeout. Service pressure from Nebraska and the Huskers up by five. Yeah, when you can serve tough and get some quick points and easy points, it really just makes you play with a lot more confidence in other areas of the game. Right now, Rollins needs to take a deep breath, be confident on serve receive, and really want the ball to come to her to show that she's able to pass the ball. This Nebraska team trying to get what might be its best win of the season. Of course, they have that Penn State win. That is a part of this six-match winning streak 
for the Huskers, and this is what they've done during those half dozen matches, and you see at the bottom, they've only lost four sets during that. Yeah, and these numbers are huge, and this is why Nebraska leads in so many categories. They're consistent, they're really strong, they're nice and balanced, and again, I think they've got just a bunch of different attackers that have played well on different nights, so you never really know who the go-to is going to be on any certain night. Well, you talk to coaches in a match like this, they talk about serving and passing. And yes, it sounds cliche, but when John Cook's team gets out to a start like this with three aces, it leads to a huge fast start on the road. Yeah, and they are able to pick their targets. They work on it and they really know where they want to serve the ball to. And to have the composure on the road to do that is pretty impressive. You saw the one from Haynes. She got going with one right out of the gates. And now four of them for the Huskers. Two top 10 teams inside the PAV with two weekends left. See where the kills have come from for both these teams and for Minnesota. Because of a 6-2, a lot of times your middles, right, are going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you know, there's three hitters in the front court at all times. So, yes, if you're going to pass the ball well, then you're going to be one-on-one -on -one in many situations. Hart with a tip. Miller kept it up. Hames helped out. And then Rollins and McGraw lay out for it. Hames sets Lexi Sun out of the back row. Here's Heidi Miabe. Kept up again by Haynes. Bailey McMenamin sets Hart. Best rally so far, and the point to Minnesota. Point you. Reagan Pittman back to serve. See Miabe in the middle to be one of the important pieces and a threat for this Minnesota team running the 6-2 the last 6-7 matches. Yeah, I think she's, um, we said it earlier, the X factor for this Gopher team. Uh -huh. Block on Stiverance. Yeah. Alexis Hart just reads so well and she's so strong through the shoulders. Take a look at that movement and then reaching back to the middle with her hands, strong hands. It's a press and it's a hold. She does it beautifully. Senior from Kansas City, standing at six feet tall on the pin. Pittman with an ace serve at Miller. What I see Minnesota doing a lot of is serving down that right back lane. You're gonna see right there, Slight movement with the lower body forces the ball to go off the arms and out of bounds. A slight movement in serve receive. How about wicked movement on the serve yeah. from Pittman? <laughs> yeah, as a, a passer, you really want to hold after you make contact, but you want to make contact right in the middle of your arms. You don't want it to go off the bony part of your arms, and you don't want to twist or you know, just any slight movement as you're passing the ball, especially if you're moving to your right or to your left. You want to try and get that platform facing target. And then you saw it looked like a, a Band-Aid or perhaps tape for Kenzie Knuckles, the freshman Libro for Nebraska. Yeah, making sure there's no blood, everything is cleaned up. Yep, all is good. <laughs> That'll get rid of it. Yep. Freshman who has played so well, especially as the year's gone on, much like Cubic for Nebraska. Which leads by two here in set one. Miller with a good pass this time. Cubic, again for Nebraska. Four kills for the freshman here in set one. Yeah, she had two big blockers in front of her. Doesn't pull it low, keeps it high. Great feet to the ball. This kid is gonna be a stud. She's got an All-American written all over her right now. Look at the numbers already for Cuba. Poor passing and serve receive from Hart. It leads to a Nebraska chance with Steverance unloading. Yeah, the last thing you wanna do is give free balls to Nebraska. Ball will go right up to the setter, Haynes. Take a look, an easy free ball there. Basically one-on-one, -on -one, hard cross-court shot by Stiffens. You talked about the weapons 
for Haynes to utilize. That's how it's played out so far. Four kills for Kubik, three for Sweet now, a couple for Stiverance. And the point again to Nebraska, hitting error off the tape from Hart. Hugh McCutcheon's going to his bench right now. They'll go to Claire Sheehan. Of course, transferred in a couple years back from Iowa. Played quite a bit over the weekend with the Donald Rollins out due to injury. They went side by side in server seat. It's an out of system swing and the kill. More of a defensive misget by Minnes or I'm sorry, by Nebraska rather than a huge kill by Minnesota. You've got to be able to read the hitter's arms, and once they pull that elbow down, as a defensive player, you want to anticipate that roll shot and get your feet moving. It's got the Gophers within four here in set one. Miller serve. There's Lexi Sun for the Huskers. Her first kill on her sixth swing. Well, I like the way Haynes is running down the balls that aren't passed to her. She puts it nice and high just giving her hitters the opportunity to do something with the ball. So what you can do as you're running off the net is really important for a setter. She's got great feet. So Nebraska the first to 20, and now Haley Densberger serving again. She took a big cut at it. Cubic comes out of the back row. Minnesota player in the net on the block, and nice offensive play there by Nebraska. Big backcourt attack, drawing that blocker into the net. You see the lead at a half dozen with Nebraska on a 5-1 run. Now it sets Morgan coming straight downhill. Well, there she is. But you can see what a great pass does for this Minnesota team. It's perfect, and she's one-on-one, -on -one, and then she is up as the setter is touching the ball, and that big snap, boy, that's a momentum changer for this Minnesota team. Morgan, the fifth year senior, has also missed some time this year, and of course, with injuries, big part of the story in her career. Son with a hitting miscue. And the Gophers just picking on Megan Miller right now for Nebraska. We'll see if she can elevate her level of play Kill Kelly goes at Cubic. Better swing this time for Sun. Samity has been quiet so far. Minnesota within three. Well, sometimes it's not that thunderous hit that your team needs. It's a smartly placed shot. And Samity wasn't in a great transition approach, but she does something positive with the ball by putting it in the corner. First kill for the two-time first-team All-American, and so John Cook will use his second timeout here in set one. So we've laid it out for you. you got the four teams that are at the top of the Big Ten, including these two, plus Wisconsin, which is in the driver's seat, despite having now that one loss that they picked up at the hands of Ohio State. You've got Penn State, one game ahead in terms of how many they've played so far, and what lies ahead for these remaining four. Yeah, and if you look at it, like Wisconsin, big match tomorrow, and then on the road at Penn State. And then, you know, you look at Penn State next weekend playing Wisconsin and Minnesota. I mean, that is really, really tough. And so, you know, the Big Ten title is still up for grabs is the bottom line, and it's any team that plays the most consistent here in the next couple weeks, they'll win it. Yeah, anything can happen down the stretch. We remember that final weekend of the season at Happy Valley. We were there last year, and at the time it was an undefeated Minnesota team that went down at the hands of Penn State in a right. thriller. Yeah, yeah, I remember that match vividly. It was so much fun. But yeah, so you know, these teams, they're all capable of knocking each other off. And then you've got those um, outliers like Ohio State that beat Nebraska. You know, you, you can't take any match for granted, but certainly the next couple weekends are gonna be tough for the top four. Well, you alluded to it Sunday on BTN. It's Lexi's son and these Huskers. They continue the tough road trip, a pivotal matchup. 
Dana Retke and the Badgers. Wisconsin, of course, swept Nebraska in Lincoln earlier this year. You don't want to miss it. It's powered by Unleaded 88. Sunday, 2.30 Eastern, BTN and the Fox Sports app. Tough serve at Cubic from Rachel Kilkelly. Nebraska by three, getting late in set one. Haynes. The dump was kept up. And the point to Nebraska, despite the best gopher efforts. Yeah, that was great defensive effort by Minnesota. Every point matters, and they were not going to give up on the play. Good effort there by Kylan Miller for the third contact. Tried to whip it over. Unsuccessful, but great effort. Ames had five kills against Iowa over the weekend. A service error from the sophomore setter. Now C.C. McGraw will serve for Minnesota. <laughs> Kept up by Sweet, denying Pittman. Rollins. Knuckles bump set is for Sun. Uh, Donna Rollins feeling it in that play. You know, she roll shotted the first ball. It was a 5-5 five five set. Just kept the ball in play. And that's sometimes a good strategy if you have confidence in your defensive part of the game, blocking and digging. So smart shot. And then a big block for the point. And this burst has Minnesota within a pair. Cross serving. Bump set from Haynes. Minnesota still serving that right back area of the court, anticipating that Haynes is going to set a high ball, long distance to that left pin. And then they're perfectly set up on defense, ready for whatever comes their way. Good job by Knuckles this time on the pass. Kept up by Kill Kelly. Bump set for Jazz Sweet. McGraw. Now Rollins. Kept up in the back by Cubic. And Sun thought it was down, and now it is. Whoa, Cubic uh -oh. in the back. Sun with the power. Nebraska up by two. Well, Cubic, take a look at that. That's just great effort, sticking one arm out. And Sun thought it was down. Great defensive get from Minnesota, but couldn't track down that second contact. And a service error. Two of them late okay. in set one for the Huskers. Yeah, Nebraska erring Minnesota into this match. A couple unforced errors, especially off their serve. Samity. Pass from Cubic. Sweet. Miller's bump set leads to a free ball. Haynes for Sweet down the line. Set point coming up. Impressive tempo there by Nebraska. Again, free ball coming over. Take a look at how quick it gets to that right side. And then you can see the line right between Rollins' left hand and the line. Nice gaping area for her to swing hard into. Knuckle serves at Kill Kelly for Pittman. Aims his bump set all the way over to Cubic. And set one to Nebraska. What a fantastic bump set. Clear across the court. Wow, Hames is a star. John Cook says Nicklin Hames might be the best bump setter in the country. How about that on set point for the Huskers? Maddie Kubik, the six kills. She also had seven digs in set one and then Jazz Sweet, four kills without an error. Yeah, these numbers for outside pin hitters is outstanding. So if these two can continue playing this well, uh, it's gonna be a quick night for Minnesota. Gotta love it when your pin hitters hit numbers like that.
So set one to Nebraska. Now, if you remember last year, these teams met twice. The yep. second meeting was here at the PAB. Nebraska came in, they took set one, then it was all Minnesota after yeah. that. Yeah, it's about playing consistently well from start to finish. So, you know, Nebraska should feel good about that first set, but that one's done. You've got to be focused on this next one. Two top 10 teams, the one and only meeting between them this season. You can see Schwarzenbach there, <laughs> as you mentioned, coughing a little bit. Tis the season. And you know what? Nobody's you know, gonna be healthy every time you step on the court. You've gotta go out and compete. If you're not at 100% physically, you still gotta do your job out there. We're all day to day on yeah. this loss. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Our BTN crew with you from the PAV tonight. Set to get started. Aim sets the middle for Callie Schwarzenbach, who had just one kill on one swing. We told you earlier, playing with a broken thumb. Right. You know what I like about Haynes, though, is she takes risks with Schwarzenbach early in each set. So as a middle on the other side, you can't completely let her go. She has a great feel for distribution and how many sets she should give the hitters that aren't the go-to hitters on the team. And on a similar note, Miller sets the middle and she finds Taylor Morgan. Yeah, Morgan does a really good job of just putting herself in good position away from the net, opportunity to swing through the ball. Team high with those four kills now for the fifth year senior from Blaine, Minnesota, about 25 minutes north of here. Ground serve off the tape. Stiverns and Sun collided, and Stiverns shaken up. Yeah, they're going to huddle up a little bit longer. Here's the short serve that causes a little bit of a commotion here. Goes right off of the tape, and so Stiverns collides with Sun. Looked like her shoulder got bumped up. Cubic keeps on swinging for the Huskers up to seven kills. Yeah, and that is a really hard thing to teach hitters is to go flat and high off the hands. Most hitters want that straight down shot that's going to get a lot of people off their feet. But, you know, that is a great shot and one that young players really need to develop in their game. And John Cook said to us at Servant Pass today, he said, I don't care where you're from or who you are. At any level, you've just got to get comfortable coming into the Big Ten, learning how to play in this conference, and then given the workload that we've talked about too with Cubic. Yeah, Cubic makes it look easy, and what she's doing is just unbelievable. There's not, not that many freshmen in the country that are playing six rotations at a level that she's playing. Better Minnesota passing this time for Reagan Pittman to terminate. Yeah, let's take a look at Pittman again. Her speed off the ground, shuffle, shuffle, up. And you can see that there's two blockers in front of her, but she cuts it back to the right back area of the court away from the blocker's hands. Five kills for Pittman, a returning second team All-American from last year. Kubik changed it up this time. Now Miyabe. Sun. And the point to Minnesota foot was over the line. Yeah, as a back row attacker, you have to stay behind the 10-foot line when you take off. I believe her foot touched that line, and so whistled, end of play. So I'm trying to get in a rhythm here. Five hitting errors for her so far. Cubic with the rare miscue so far, and Minnesota up by two. Well, Minnesota's finding some luck serving short. John Cook is going to challenge this one. So John Cook with the green card, and he will have a look at it.
let's see what we can find. Yeah. Yep. See Miyabe with the right arm. Yeah. And she's trying to say no touch, no touch. <laughs> but you can see her distance from the net is a little bit far. So she actually has to reach to get over the net and that's where she causes the violation, her forearms. You know, you want to stay a little bit away from the net, but you don't want to bat your arms down as you're blocking. And that's what she did. It was a clear touch on the net. And we asked you McCutcheon about it today, how her blocking has come along. She's not maybe Samity caliber over there on the outside, but she has grown some in that regard. Yeah, and I think blocking is always one of those things. The speed of the game in the Big Ten is tough, so blocking is really hard um, to learn, and you, you have to just experience it. And, you know, it's tough. So if she can get some good, solid touches as a right side uh, blocker, that'll be huge for her team. She doesn't have to stuff block, just get some positive touches on the ball. Wouldn't you love it if all challenges were that clear to see right. and that quick? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Four four that. in set two now. And cubic serving. And the service error. And so now three of them for Nebraska. Remember, they had those two toward the end of set one. And Donna Rollins is back healthy. Unavailable over the weekend. It's been a rash of injuries for Minnesota throughout the season as Stiverin scores for the Huskers. Yeah, the Gophers has, have had a rough s season. And, you know, what's remarkable, though, is Human Cutchin, you know, he makes no excuses. He embraced the challenge of, of what was in front of him. And so, you know, I commend him for his leadership and just getting the team focused every single night to compete hard. Now, we stood there today and we asked him, hey, what's one thing you really want to clean up as we get toward December? And he said, hey, it's tough to really answer that yeah. because it's been all about, can we just find a, a lineup that we're going to stick with? Yeah, and there's so much to this game about feeling and rhythm, you know, just knowing who you're playing next to. Uh, and so it's been difficult. But Minnesota, give them credit. They've had a spectacular Big Ten season and they're in the hunt for the title. So this is a fun one for them. Tough serve from Densberger came over and it was right near the line. And then Hart couldn't save it. Yeah, and you saw Kylie Miller over there on the sideline in the 6-2. There has been one Big Ten match all year for Minnesota when Miller has operated a 5-1. I mean, they've had it just one match, essentially, what they had planned to have all offseason. Yeah, uh, and, and it's difficult. And it was difficult for her, too, just from, you know, mental standpoint you know you, you come in with these big expectations and you get blindsided by this injury and to try to stay positive through it all can be very difficult so I'm sure she's excited to be playing in one of the biggest matches here for Minnesota. Yeah we asked Hugh McCutcheon to give us a window inside to, to Kylie Miller's mind what's it been like for her you're a west coast kid from Rancho Cucamonga California you've been at UCLA you make the decision to come here you came in the winter, and then you've had to have this time away from the team, not knowing when you'd be able to come back, when the doctor would clear you. Finally did yesterday. Huskers by one. Pittman laid out for it, and now Hart with a tip. Haynes. Son had to adjust, and she scores anyway. Alexi Sun does a really good job, like you said, Mike, of adjusting. The ball was set a little far off the net, so she was ready to blast in for a perfect set. And so what does she do? Smart player, roll shots it right into the middle of the court, finds a way to score. Her third kill this set, early on in set two. Another service error. It's now five of them for the Huskers. back in and serving. I feel like that's one of the underrated aspects of her being back. They add another strong server. Draw with the dig on the sun swing. And the point to Nebraska. Yeah, double contact there by 
Kylie Miller. And she knew it as soon as it came out of her hands. Lots of spin on it. She's just going to let that one go. You said earlier, getting your touch back. Yeah. For so much time away. Yeah. Minnesota all sorts of jumbled. Huskers by three. Yeah. And Nebraska doing the same thing, serving down the line, and that causes the ball to be passed a little bit farther away. Lots of confusion on the Gopher side. So Nebraska up, having won the first set, now up by three early in set two. Goldie having some fun here inside the path, trying to spur this crowd to life. A timeout for Minnesota. This is what happened after each of the two timeouts in set one for the Gophers coming off them. Yeah, runs are all about serving tough and managing your errors. So Gophers really taking advantage of the timeout, kind of regrouping and talking about managing their unforced errors and just laying BBs over the mat. Well, that's one thing that John Cook has talked about with serving, as you see here, and with passing. That is what gives you runs, and that's what stops runs. Right, and, and right now, again, Nebraska's going down the line. You see Kylie Miller in that right back area of the court. So if the ball is passed over her, it's, it's really difficult for her to track the ball down. She got to this one, and a big swing going line by Samity. And Morgan with her fifth kill. Ames is saying they were in the net. We'll see if Cook challenges or not. She is still looking over in the direction of her head coach. Nebraska by three. Sweet. Off to a fast start in set one. Cubic. Sweet. We're the point to the Huskers. What about Lexi Sun looking like a setter in the backcourt? High ball, perfectly placed. Calling off the bro, putting it nice and high right to that pin. Jazz Sweet with a smart shot. Deep, right back corner. Nebraska by four. Morgan from the middle and Knuckles kept it up. High for Kubik, Hames his coverage. Kubik again. Miller for Samity. Can we get her going as we go along here in set two? They absolutely have to get her going. She has an arm and can change the outlook of the game here. A nice high shot again, right off the blocker's hands. But yes, Samity is critical for Minnesota. She's got to start getting some big numbers for her team. Just her second kill tonight. This season, the lowest attacking numbers of her career. That was a powerful swing from Sweet. Came back over off the McGraw dig. Off the free ball, Nebraska to the pin for Sweet. Great job by Kill Kelly controlling it. Kubik, and now Sweet the swing. Bump set from McGraw. Sweet. Again this time, kept up and off the antenna. What a point for Nebraska. A tremendous defensive effort on both sides of the net. Minnesota laying out for a couple digs to keep the ball alive. Take a look at that. What a set there by Haynes. Nice off-speed shot there. Tip off the blocker's hands by Jess Sweet. You see has a half dozen kills. Kubik through Samity. You now you can see why having a good second contact, especially for non-setters, is so important. That ball is right on top of the net. Advantage goes to Kubik and an easy point for Nebraska. Double-double already. Pittman going at Miller. And the point to Minnesota on a hitting error from Kubik. 
her cubic's been so good, but on that play, she was trying to force it down the line, and again, just roll shotting, trying to get maybe one of the players on Minnesota's side of the net to play the ball a front court player to eliminate one of the hitting options from Minnesota would have been a smarter shot. And back to Cubic with a tip that outraced Adana Rollins, who is slow to get up. Well, they play a very interesting defense. Minnesota has their left front player coming all the way over to get the tip. So Rollins is trying to get that ball that goes right over top of the block. Samity's playing deep down the line. Looks like Rollins is trying to shake off a little pain there after that play. A lot of ground to cover, like you said. Five point margin for the Huskers. Samity from the back going at Stiverens tonight. Well, Stiverens knows that that is a play, so she stays home. She respects the fact that Samity is a big threat in the backcourt. Stiverens a good job of reading the play, sealing the net. Well, not the run that Hugh McCutcheon wanted this time, so he needs another timeout here inside the path. She's a great defensive player, both blocking and in backcourt defense. And then she's so disciplined in serve-receive. John Cook likes it when teams serve her because she's got a ton of confidence in her passing game as well. So hitting numbers are outstanding. She does a lot as a six-rotation player to make Nebraska the team that they are. Yeah, you see what she's done compared to Minnesota. And we had fun chatting with John Cook today, looking back on how long he has known Maddie Kubik. Right. When she was in eighth grade, the USA national team was playing in Nebraska. Maddie Kubik, of course, right on cue with the service <laughs> serve, ran up to John Cook, wanted a picture, an autograph, and said, I'm going to play for you someday. She was in eighth grade at the time. And John Cook says, look, a lot of people say that to me. I have sure. kids come up to me and say that often. But she actually went out and fulfilled it. That's right. And, you know, as a high schooler club player, she kept getting better every year. So this is a kid who just knew what she wanted and went for it. And she's having a great time here tonight. Well, they had her in at a camp soon thereafter. And in John Cook's work, she was okay. And then in 10th grade, they saw her down in Florida, and she had really progressed. Reagan Pittman for the Gophers gets him within four. Well, Pittman hitting sharp angles. She just gets up so quickly. She's running a slide really well tonight for her team. And John Cook will take the first of his two timeouts here in set two. Well, Reagan Pittman, meanwhile, had the kill for Minnesota. She's got six of them. Hasn't had an error. She's done it on 12 swings, and she's been the best threat, along with Morgan, the two medals for Minnesota. Yeah, and, you know, as we talk about Kylie Miller, you know, she's going to get in rhythm with Pittman. Oftentimes, to set your middle, it takes a lot of experience, a lot of reps. But right now, her and Pittman seem to be in rhythm. And I think it's because Pittman does a really good job of communicating with her and letting her know where she is along the net. They've combined for 11 kills so far tonight. And then when you talk about their blocks in conference action this season, two of the top three. Yeah, these two really do a good job um, of sealing the net. And they're really good at reading the play. So based on what the passer does, they know where they should block and what the hitter's tendencies are. So really smart players uh, defensively for the Gophers. Well, hey, tomorrow on BTN, Adrian Martinez and the Huskers, they go to College Park trying to shake off some of their recent road woes. They've got a clash with Maryland as the Huskers look for their fifth win this season. It's Big Ten football powered by Unleaded 88 tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Speaking of big football games, you know Columbus quite well, of course. How about that one going yeah, on tomorrow? It's going to be a good one tomorrow. Yep, absolutely. The Buckeyes against Penn State. A peek behind the curtain. Earlier I asked Audrey Fly how you're feeling about that one, and you're very confident about <laughs> your Buckeyes tomorrow. Well, I've got reason to be. They're a great team. We get Chase Young back as well, of course. Coming out of the timeout, Lexi Sun for Nebraska, which leads by five in set two. You know, Lexi Sun leaps so well, great vertical, and then I like how she turns and she faces line, but keeps her hand high as she's trying to rip that line shot. Coming off back-to-back -back matches with single-digit kills, nine against Michigan State, eight against Iowa. We've got 14 matches in a row before that in double figures with kills. A tip 
not this time. Miller and McGraw kept it up, despite some confusion. Now Sun blasting off hands for another kill. Yeah, great defensive play there by Minnesota to keep the ball off the ground, but it resulted in a free ball. Take a look at this. You can see how the left back is right under the block. But look at this finish here. No defensive effort on that particular play in middle back for Minnesota. Sandsburg, tough serve. And Pittman for the Gophers. Well, Pittman has been outstanding tonight. Her seventh kill, hitting over 500 so far. So when they have needed a kill, Pittman has certainly delivered. We are just enjoying watching her in serve and pass today when she gets some swings on a slide. It's explosive. Yeah, and it's just, you know, she's got a heavy arm and a fast arm. And then, you know, she's 6'5", so she's so high above the net. Um, and, you know, she just, she, she wanted more reps, actually. She was like, let me hit a couple more. So I, I like that attitude. She, of course, serves for them as well and has the last few years. Margin is five here in set two. Morgan on the overpass. Well, the ball goes right to Kenzie Knuckles. Good float serve there. And it almost looks like it's going to be a perfect pass. Just goes over the net there. And of course the Gophers clean it up. Minnesota Middles cleaning it up there. They have combined for 13 kills, one error on 21 swings between them. Good pass from Kubik. A kill for Sun, very easy on yeah, the tip. A smart play, they run the inside, like a 32, and you're gonna see that they know exactly where Pittman is, she's in the backcourt, and so not the quickest defensive player, and then you can see Alexis Hart not playing directly under the block on that one. So lots of room for the tip, lots of room to score. Kill leaders for the Huskers spreading it around and Hames is struggling with her serve tonight. Yeah, back-to-back -back errors for her. Every time she's gone back, she's been a little hesitant. So as a server, you just got to have confidence in, even if it's a short serve, you do want to get a good contact on the ball. I feel like that's the signal she's getting is short. Just Sun. Got the touch, got another kill. He's up to nine of them now, and has had a really strong set, too. Yeah, Sun seems to like that deep middle to right back shot. She scored a lot tonight doing that. Again, this is a young lady who plays with a ton of confidence. I've seen her not have great games and then come back and turn around and play really well. So she's got a great head on her shoulders and really does a lot for this Nebraska team. What does Minnesota need to do to figure things out right here? Well, the second contact right now, when Kelly Miller is out there, she should call help a little sooner so the rest of her team knows that she's not going for the ball. It's, it's just a little communication error and hesitation on the, her teammates' part. Hart took the pass and then came back and got the swing. Well, when Hart goes up to swing, you have got to make sure that you're pressing, holding, and taking away the seam in the block. Take a look at how fast she goes, and then it's right there in the seam. Definitely want to take her cross-court shot away. A player with more than 1,300 kills in her career. Sheehan. End of the block. So Hugh McCutcheon trying to find some rhythm with the outside. Donna Rollins is on the bench. You see a new outside Sheehan play for Minnesota. So Hugh McCutcheon a little frustrated with his outsides right now. So Kelly sprawled to get it. Nearly kept up by Knuckles and company, but Samity's got it down. You know, as a defensive player, you want to stay calm and you want to go hard for the ball. And if you can play it with two, two is always better than one. Right now, Knuckles is going with one and she's able to get the ball off the ground, but not high enough or far enough off the net for a good second contact. Great pass 
pass from her this time gets Cubic with another kill. I love the change up there. Cubic typically goes on the outside. Stiffens was on the left side. Cubic goes right up the gut. Take a look at this. And lots of area there. Left back corner to swing into. I like the change up. It gives just a slightly different look and forces Minnesota to really be disciplined next time on serve receive. Pass by Sheehan. And Minnesota down by six. There's the block. Well, Pittman got fooled on the last play, was not fooled that time. Made sure that she was going to make Cubic earn that kill and just stuff blocks her, takes away that cross court shot. Samity. Changed it up. Ames didn't get all of it. For Cubic. Going sharp with a wrist away in. Wow. Yeah, that is a huge shot. That's a veteran type shot right there. You know the defense, what they're going to do. Take a look. She sees the left side blocker under the block as they have always played. What area is open? Right there. And you don't have your bro playing left back, so that's the perfect place to shot. What a stud. Man. Stiverance. What a start these first two sets for Nebraska on the road. Yeah, this team looks unstoppable right now, but as we've said, you gotta forget about the last two, come out strong. Take a look at the hitting percentage there. Team hitting for Nebraska, 385 for the match. Another look at this, Stiverens on the slide. And huge celebration, they know this is big. Getting two sets on the road at Minnesota. Big time. 25-22 in set one, 25-18 in set two for the Huskers. Number six in the country in this top 10 showdown. It has been all Nebraska so far from the path. But serve pass, well right now, Nebraska's winning that battle. Strong performances from Cubic for the Huskers already with a double-double. She was outstanding those first couple of sets. We'll see what Minnesota has in store in front of these home fans. We welcome on Hugh McCutcheon, who joins us now. Coach, your biggest area of focus that you just chatted about with your team. Yeah, we're, we're getting beat up in serve receive, so we really got to take care of that first contact and see if we can, you know, get some offense going. I think there's some good things that we're doing, but they're, they're playing great and, uh, you know, good for them, but uh, we got to try and respond to that. So, Coach, how did you settle your team down? I mean, what is it about passing that you think you're going to tell your team to do a little bit better this time? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's, it's more about just getting a good read off the hand and trying to get in the line as soon as we can. And it feels like we're trying to be perfect a lot. And, and I think good is good enough. But, uh, but uh, right now we're kind of feast or famine. And, you know, it's real good or it's not so hot. So we got to be somewhere in between, I think. All right, Hugh, thanks for the time as always. Yep, cheers. Hugh McCutcheon, the head coach for Minnesota, down two sets to none so far against this Nebraska team. And we told you about the balance. We told you about Cubic and Lexi Sun was outstanding in set two as well. Yeah, she has gotten so good. And, and not only in this match, but over the course of her career at Nebraska. And take a look at what she does. She gets a lot of out of system sets and she manages to get her feet to the ball and take big rips on it. And that's exactly what you want from a pin hitter. Big turnaround for her. What she did out of the gates. She had a couple of kills in set one, but it was a real slow start for her. Some hitting errors involved in that. And then really had just got in a rhythm working with Haynes. Yeah, I think that's a sign of a great player is when you can just kind of forget about your last play and just not worry about playing perfect and just kind of rally for your team. So uh, I've seen her do this a number of times in the past. Not a great start, but ends up getting big numbers and making big, big plays both on defense uh, and blocking. So, yeah, definitely Lexi Sun has to turn it on here in the third. Oh, 
and you pointed out the seven A serves. Hugh McCutcheon said serve receive, obviously the biggest focus for us. And said to them, you don't need to be perfect necessarily. Yeah, and what he said is, you know, a good read on the ball when the server makes contact. So you've got to call it early and you've got to track it before it crosses the net. Rollins in there, takes it in serve receive to get us going. In set three. Bumps in from Angie Knuckles for Sun. And no touch. Sun wants a challenge. He had to get the green card to do so. Jalen <laughs> Reyes, the assist. the right hand. You see the footage they're looking at, the down official. Try this look, see if we can zoom in and glean anything from it. Well, one thing you can see that Kylie Miller's hands are away from the net, and so the tendency to get used is greater. When you're reaching over the net at the point of contact, you tend to stuff block the ball. When your hands are up, it almost creates a target to go off of. So she's kind of late in developing the block and reaching over, which is a good indication that she could be getting used on that play. She's 5'11". She's got a few inches on Bailey McMenamin, who's listed at 5'9". Crowd getting a little antsy here inside the path. Just out of the gates in set three. All right, so the point stays with Minnesota. All right, no touch. So now Miller back to serve. On the overpass, an easy one for Alexis Hart. It's a real awkward serve-receive pattern right now for Nebraska. We'll see if they start the same way. No, they're pulling Lexi's son over to the right side. They did have Jazz Sweet circling, circling all the way behind to get the approach on the right side, so they adjusted their serve-receive pattern. Same direction with the Miller serve. Sweet had to rush up to it. Knuckles couldn't keep it alive. Well, you can see how those change-up shots, the defense is back on their heels, and when they see the tip, they're trying to track it down, but they're playing that hard shot that they're so used to seeing from Minnesota, not able to run down the tip. And a 3-0 lead for Minnesota. And a 
service error this time. Yeah, and I don't know if we quite caught that, but Jazz Sweet is coming along the end line to make her approach on that serve receive pattern. We'll see if they do that the next time she's in left front on serve receive. They have two options. They can stack that left side, which puts Lexi Sun on the left pin to hit first, or they could pull Lexi Sun to the right pin. So they have some options. Sun serving now with a ton of movement on it. And Hart for the Gopher. The set's pulling Alexis Hart in a little bit, and she takes advantage of Schwarzenbach not completely reaching over on that. So Hart winning the battle at the net. So much of the production for Minnesota, the first two sets, came from the medals in Pittman and Morgan. Free ball now for Nebraska again. Sweet. Nice shot by Jazz Sweet. Yeah, Sweet is hitting over top of Adonna Rollins, or she's battling against Rollins. And right now, these free balls, they're in system. The ball goes right to the net, and you can see, even though she's going for that cross-court shot, the block is just not well formed against Sweet, and it's because they're sending over free balls right now. Minnesota is to Nebraska. Told you earlier, Sweet coming off 18 kills, a career-high tying against Iowa. Cubic, the vision again. So many different shots we've seen from her. Yeah, and you know, it's important that you know what the defense does on a on an attack that you're going to be hitting a lot. And so she knows that they curl under the block. The left front player curls. So in this case, CeCe McGraw is playing left back, and she's got a lot of area to hit into, but she also has to be back for that thunderous cross-court hit. So roll shot score. Morgan with the kill off a great pass from Kill Kelly that started it. Let's see how important that serve receive is. One-on-one -on -one here. Number 12, Taylor Morgan, is going to win that battle. She's so quick off her feet, and then she hits angles, not straight ahead, which is key. Sweet. Unloading with power at CC McGraw. Yeah, Sweet is having herself a spectacular night. Take a look at this distance set, far, and then down the line with a lot of pace on the ball. Talked about some of the distance on the sets mm -hmm. from Nicklin Haynes. We, of course, saw the bump set that ended set one. John Cook was talking about her and how she is such a gunslinger, and he likes that style in his setters. Yeah, you know, setters have got to kind of think of a hierarchy when they're setting. You have to make a good set. That's the base right there. A smart set would be something strategic that your team wants to do. And then there's the tricky set, and that's what Haynes does. She sets things that are unexpected, and that's why he calls her a gunslinger, and I love that term. I don't think there's any other way to set the ball, actually. I think it makes it a lot more fun to play the position. Yeah, that is your style. He had fun talking about it. His daughter, Lauren, he said she was absolutely a gunslinger. He said Kelly Hunter but came that way over time as her career wore off. Minnesota by two in set three. Rollins on the net, changing it up. Well, Rollins saying, hey, I, I can hit that shot too. Just watch me. Takes a look at the defense. Roll shot. Gets a little help from the top of the net, though. That's a big point for Rollins. Building up her confidence. There's six kills between Samity and Rollins tonight on 32 swings. Remember, Rollins had some terrific breakout matches last year against Nebraska. And the point to Minnesota on the block. Nebraska looking to the sideline. And he is trusting his team. Oh, Lexi's son was saying it was out by a mile, coach. Take a look at the line here after the swing. Remember, this is the third challenge for John Cook. Yeah. It it looks it looks out to me. It looks like it hits the maroon there instead of the white. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. But we were wrong. Well, At least I was yeah. on the second challenge. <laughs> I was wrong too. <laughs> and you're looking at the white line just to make sure we're all clear. Yeah. Not the maroon. Yeah, if any part of the ball hits the white line, it's in. Um, but it doesn't appear to me that 
even with a little bit of shadow there, just looks like it's hitting maroon, no red, or no white, sorry. It's tough, we got, we got all sorts of colors there. <laughs> Remember the first challenge from John Cook proved that there was a net violation committed by Minnesota. Uh -huh. We had the challenge at the beginning of this set as well that we thought there was a touch, perhaps on the finger on the right hand of Kylie Miller. The point did stand with Minnesota. And now this point initially belongs to Minnesota. And our down official having a look at it. Yeah, and it really is clear it depends on what angle you're looking at because I feel like the first shot that we had showed that the ball was out but that particular angle the last one we saw we just couldn't tell so we're not quite sure what the down official is able to see it is out and the point to Nebraska I know sometimes the coaches get frustrated when it's if it's a close call they get it but in that case, I think his team was like, Coach, it was out by a lot. And and so I think they don't want to use the challenge when it seems like an obvious right. miscall. You're, you're frustrated. Yeah. You had to get to that point. Yeah. And now, of course, John Cook without challenges for the rest of this set. If we go to a fourth set without a challenge, he would get one if we go to set five. It's Pittman's eighth kill of the night. She's having... Just a tremendous match so far. It seems like everything she touches goes straight down. Got four blocks as well. She has been the leader for Minnesota. She's trying to locate it after she went up for a block touch on Sun, who powers it through this time. The Sun does a really nice job of turning and using the ball, using the block. And she's taking advantage there of Pittman being late to the party. Hands high, but not over. When Pittman gets over, that's when she is a deadly block. But if she's high, she becomes a nice target to hit off of. And a service error. That's eight of them for Nebraska. Hitting in behind the service line. Minnesota up by three in set three. Knuckles stepped in front of Cubic. Sun is long. Load for Sun. She's got a match high 30 swings so far. James has to bump set it for Sun. And going at Pittman cross court. Yeah, smart shot. And you know, the thing about uh, Sun is she gets a lot of out of system sets, just like that one there. Yeah. And so to be able to find a way to score. Um, is, is just shows how smart she is. And she knows exactly where Pittman plays defense. She doesn't need to kill the ball. She just needs to place it just out of Pittman's defensive range. Hart blasting at Cubic. Comes off of her hands so quickly. Right now, the offensive numbers for Minnesota are huge. And off the shoulder of that young lady right there, what a swing. Seven kills for Hart in the match. In this set, you mentioned for Minnesota, seven kills, no errors. They've done it on 11 swings. Sun this time got the touch. And as a backcourt player, when you, when you know a player typically goes high off the blocker's hands, you gotta be ready to track that ball down. And if you can, jump, tomahawk, anything to keep the ball alive. You just can't let the ball get hit. And if it's somewhere in your range, you gotta go for it. You gotta try, get a touch. Sanity, she's starting to get fired up as she brings her team together. Yeah, Samity just needs a high ball. Take a look at her movement here. Shuffle, shuffle. She's in serve receive in the middle of the court. 
And it's easy for a blocker to lose track of where she is. Sometimes you stare at the ball too much and you lose track of where your hitter is actually coming from and you're late on the block. Jazz sweet. He said earlier over the top of Rollins. Yeah, they just cannot find a way to slow sweep down. Minnesota hasn't gotten touches, and not in the front court or in the back court. You can see number 12 there, Taylor Morgan on the block for Minnesota, a little bit late, and Jazz Sweet is loving it. She's having a heyday. Good pass from Kill Kelly. Coverage off the Morgan swing. Well, I like seeing Rollins animated and excited. She made a great save defensively, comes back quick on the block, scores one, reading Jazz Sweet perfectly, taking that line shot. And then she goes right back into that calm look. <laughs> Sixth kill for the All-American middle. You know, and think about Adonna Rollins here. You have Stiverance coming for a quick, so you have to help as a left side. You don't want to just let her go. But then you've got Jazz Sweet as a terminator right in front of you. So being a left side blocker is really, really tough. You've got to help with the quick, be fast on the pin. Cubic. Goes back for Cubic. Another swing for Samity along the tape. And the point to Minnesota to go up 5 4. Well, Minnesota feels like they are in rhythm right now. They're feeling it, playing very well. Samity getting some key swings and scores for her team. Tip on the slide. Cubic trying to push it. Now Rollins. Punched up by McGraw. Pittman misfires. She thinks a touch. And Hugh McCutcheon already with the green card in hand. Let's take a look here. Pittman elevating so well. It does look like there is a touch here. Right off that hand, right hand. You see it, Mike, right there? Yeah, and now we'll try this angle with it. But you can see their reaction, how quickly they knew that. Yeah. And the redirection. Temporary reprieve from the momentum that would have followed that and right. the way the crowd would have exploded. Yeah, it looks like it gets Stiverin's pinky right hand. Yeah, we think pretty clear. You saw Reagan Pittman right away insist. Yeah. She's calling touch, touch, touch right there. <laughs> that young lady plays with a lot of confidence. I like her swagger too. Richard Jr. from Spring Hill, Kansas, about 40 minutes outside of Kansas City. You get a look how the down official oftentimes looking at different angles and views yep. than what necessarily we have access to what you're seeing at home so sometimes that's part of the discussion part of how short it is how quick it is and, and ultimately what the final decision is as well looking at one of our television angles right now you saw 
We have another look at it. Now they're using this view with all the others they have access to. You know, again, I, I just appreciate the elevation on the block and the form and how the hands are reaching over. I know we're looking for a touch, but what I like to see is, you know, defensive positioning, knuckles on the line with her left foot, making sure that a line shot was going to be dug and everybody stopped and ready on defense. So I can appreciate these challenges because I get to see <laughs> defensively how everything is set up. It's kind of fun. Well, still a discussion about it. And the point to Nebraska. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise because I think we saw something yeah. a little different than the outcome of the call. Yeah, it's a few times in this set we thought touches. Miller with the dump. Kylie Miller and the Golden Gophers. Down two sets to none, but up by four in set three. So it seems to be a 5-1 that Hugh McCutcheon wants to go with, and uh, they're playing well in the third set, having played a 5-1 here in the third. So you see the efficiency by set here tonight for the Gophers. Another bump set for Hart. Well, and he said we would ease Kylie Miller back yeah. into it. And that's not coach speak. He, he didn't really know what to expect because they tried to bring her back just over a month ago. A couple of matches in the middle of October. And she had a setback from that. So they didn't know exactly what they'd get even when she got back out there tonight. Yeah, and she looks ready to go. I mean, she's, she's playing very, very well. Despite not having a ton of reps under her belt because of the injury. Pushed it out there for Sun. Hart couldn't find the hands. Now Nebraska wants to try and get a little bit of a run here, put a little pressure on Minnesota and see what they're made of, what they're all about, because they can try to narrow the gap here a little bit. Um, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Minnesota. They're down now, two sets to zero. Let's see what they can do. Hart finds the spot. Now, I always feel like those well-placed shots, it's got a lot of spin on it, so it's hitting the floor pretty quick, but it's just deep in that left back corner. So Nebraska's rotating a little bit. They're taking away the middle shot, the hard shot to middle back. Nice little off speed there in the corner. Scores for Lux's heart. And now Pittman serves. <laughs> Trying to go to Schwarzenbach that time, and it's Minnesota by six. Minnesota lost set to 25-18, up 18-12. Samity and Miller laying out for it. Haynes again on the slide to Schwarzenbach. You like that going right back to her? <laughs> I do. I think it builds confidence, and I think it's unexpected. You talk about a tricky set. You would think because a hitter made an error, uh, you know, you're not going to go back to her, or you think parts on the outside. I think it's smart. I think it builds confidence, and it shows... Um, that you trust your middle to score. Tight spot. Third kill for Schwarzenbach. Samity came flying. Sky high dig from Kubik. And there's Lexi Sun 
13 kills right there with Matty Cuban. I think Haynes managed that very high dig perfectly. It was way high, and it's so difficult to set a ball that's dug that high, so she opts to just lay out that platform, put up a nice set, a bump set to that left pin. Haynes serves short at Morgan. Hart thought Morgan was getting the swing. Off the block, tooling it. Back within three. Minnesota trying to run a go, a B and a go, really fast on that left side, making an error on the attempt. It's a 3-0 run for Nebraska to get back within three in set three. In set three as they've gone from 6-2 to 5-1, but Nebraska now on a run. This is a tenuous time here. Yeah, and, and now's the time for Minnesota to take charge and, and get a set under their belt, but there's a lot of volleyball left to be played in this third one. Taylor Morgan having a great match so far. Seven kills, hitting 600. Pittman doing a nice job too, hitting 389 so far for the match. Nicklin Hames serves with the Huskers on that 3-0 run. Coming out of the timeout with a bounce in the step. Yeah, one on one. Take a look at the block right now, leaning the wrong direction. Schwarzbach, you saw her leaning to her left. The set goes to her right. She's late. Easy kill for Hart. And of those 10 for the match, six of them for Hart in this third set. <laughs> Samity sets. Hart with the vision this time. I like what I'm seeing from this Minnesota team. They're rallying back, finding a way to win. Look at those hands. Samity, nice set, nice high set, perfectly placed. Lexis Hart finishing it off with a roll shot. It means a timeout for John Cook and the Huskers trailing in set three after taking the first two. The non-conference from a Big Ten perspective just in seeing matches with some of those Big Ten teams against those top four nationals. These coaches went out and scheduled tough. Set for Samity. Samity. Take a look at Samity taking her first step as the ball is being touched by Miller, the setter. Great rhythm, great location. You know, this is classic Hugh McCutcheon working his magic, finding a way to get his team to compete hard. And they're in a nice position to win this third set. Up by a half dozen. And Hart, Knuckles kept it up. And a big block by Morgan. Well, you can see when Jazz Sweet gets stuck on that left side, meaning she doesn't have time to go into her specialized position, which is the right side. She gets stuck, and on five and five sets, it's really hard for her to manage that because she's a lefty. Another timeout now for John Cook and the Huskers. of a set with efficiency for Minnesota here in set three and you see how things have shifted when they've gone from 6-2 to 5-1. Yeah and I I just feel like you know when there's one setter it's one type of set coming out of her hands nobody has to adjust and I just feel like Kylie Miller is feeling confidence and everybody is feeding off of that energy that she's bringing to the floor. Yeah, in particular Hart has fed off of that, 11 kills in total. She's done so much of the damage, she's got seven of the kills this set. Yeah, Alexis Hart does just an outstanding job of taking out of system sets and just hammering them away. You can see she's got a variety of shots and she's shown a couple savvy roll shots, thumb down, trying to get that left front corner. Uh, so really like what she's doing tonight. And I think her game keeps getting better and better as the match goes on. Hugh McCutcheon said it could be a big boost having Kylie Miller. He said, he said it might be a big improvement. We don't know that for sure, though. And that speaks in part to the job that Bailey McMenamin did in particular throughout all the time that Miller was out injured. And then also just the uncertainty of what they would get out of Kylie Miller. Yeah, and I think this is a, a clear example of just a team coming together 
and people contributing on given nights and doing whatever they need to do to get a win. And, and we're seeing it displayed right here tonight. Kylie Miller taking over the 5-1 role as a setter. McMiniman had done a tremendous job while she was out. And so now 5-1 with Miller. And the team's rebounding back in the third set. Now look, of course, it is still two sets to none. Nebraska in front on the road. And Lexi Sun out of the timeout with another swing and another kill. Now a lot of times a blocking team will try to channel an offense to hit into the bro. And CC McGraw was right there in the left back corner, but the swing from Sun was just too fast. A lot of pace behind it. Trouble for Rollins in serve receipt. Hart off the mark, so a couple quick points for Nebraska coming out of the timeout. Yeah, this will be interesting to see if Nebraska can keep on this nice run that they're having right now. We'll see if the serve goes to Rollins again. And Stiverin's trying to spur on Lexi Sun serving. Good serve. And Schwarzenbach for Nebraska. Timeout, Hugh McCutcheon. Speaking of 3-0 runs coming out of timeouts. Okay, so what can you do as a coach when you see that one player is getting picked on? You can um, kind of make her pinch over a little bit so she's still part of the serve-receive pattern, but you're really going to try to force the server to serve at her, giving a little less area of the court to serve into. And oftentimes that can result in a service error. So you've got to have confidence in the other people that are in server C that they can take up more area of the court. But Rollins right now, I wouldn't be surprised if he pinches her a little bit to her left. Well, while we await during this timeout, see what those changes are. You guys know the drill by now. We, we haven't even been plugging the hashtag BTM block party. You know the drill at this point. Barb and company having a BTN block party in Omaha, tagging Michaela Fecky <laughs> in it as well. On Instagram, totally Wilson. Site set as the Pav, what a, a cute youngster in the gopher gear. Oh, what a sweetie. Look at that. Ryan chiming in that Matty Kubik might be the best true freshman in the country. We think maybe the, the front runner in the conference. How about in the country? Yeah, well, she would get my vote for sure. I think she's um, showing what she's capable of doing tonight. She's been outstanding uh, being a six rotation player. Um, as Ryan says here in the tweet, it's uh, a hard thing to do. And she's showing a ton of confidence and poise tonight. Man, Jenny, we feel for you. Snow in Kansas. That is not enviable right now. Told you, 3-0 run for the Huskers with some tough serving. And it's clear who the serving target is right now, so we'll see if Rollins can elevate the level of play. It wouldn't surprise me right now if she gets moved a little bit to her left. Serve goes right to her. Yeah, they tried to put it somewhat between Rollins and Hart, and Minnesota comes out of it with the point. Well-placed tip, and you've got your right back going after the ball. You've got your left front going after the ball. And sometimes when two people are going after the ball, you hesitate to run through because you're afraid of smacking heads. Take a look at this. Both people are going for the ball. No one gets it. 23-18 Minnesota. That just drops down on the Nebraska side, and it brings up set point. Stoic look from John Cook. Schwarzenbach. Right along the net. And they get it on Rollins. Samity. Minnesota's got its first set tonight. Minnesota looks like a completely different team in rhythm, playing with confidence, moving the ball around offensively. A nice win here in the third. Stephanie Samity was quiet early. She caps off a big set three for the Gophers, trying to protect their home court at the path.
The Golden Gopher faithful got activated a bit in the intermission there between sets after a set three win for Minnesota. We look back at last year when these teams met here at the PAV. Remember, Nebraska was coming off a long five-setter in Madison. Nebraska took set one, then Minnesota and Alexis Hart started to heat up. Remember this kill? Yeah, I'll never forget this kill. And I don't think <laughs> people who saw that would forget it. It was a tremendous five and five hit that went inside the 10 foot line. But you're right, never rule out Hugh McCutcheon's teams. He is a, he's a great leader, so smart in making adjustments and building confidence in his players as he did in the uh, intermission between sets two and three. Yeah, that was one of a couple of meetings last year, both wins for Minnesota, both in four sets. And Maddie Kubik says, hey, I, I wasn't even around for that. <laughs> Look at her numbers. First two sets, 12 kills, 11 digs, a little bit quiet in the third with only one kill. So she was playing out of her mind in the first two sets and kind of came back down to earth uh, in the third. So we'll see if she can bring up her numbers and as a result, if she can help her Nebraska team get this fourth set. Nick Lindham said this recently, it's really hard to do what Maddie Kubik's been asked to do. I mean, she's filling the Michaela Pecky role. A serve to begin set four. It's all communication. You don't want to look at another player. You want two people going for the ball, but calling it right out of the server's hands. I think that's the key. Remember, we told you Miller is a boost for this team with her serving ability. Rollins tracks it down. Now free ball. Haynes for Cuban. Had a lot of success with that shot early on in this match. She's clearly trying to go down the line or wipe it off the blocker's hands and found nothing, no court, no hands. Hart, a kill again. She had a huge third set. Look at the force of this swing. Way past the block. The blocker's either taking line or misreading the set, but there was a ton of cross court for Alexis Hart to hit into, and she just thunders that ball over the net. Eight kills alone in set three. Schwarzenbach with the kill. Knuckles laid out to pass it. And if you're just tuning into this one, some late night Friday volleyball for you here on BTN. Two weekends to go, nine days from Selection Sunday. These are two of the top four teams in the conference. And off the block, it's down for Minnesota. So Nebraska trying to serve Alexis Hart, and they do serve Alexis Hart. She puts up a ball and gets a five and five set, and then her experience, her ability to change up the shot at the last minute gets a nice point for her team. Rachel Kill Kelly serves its son. Stiverance. Bump set from Miller for Rollins. Coverage. Rollins. And you just get the feel that Minnesota can do nothing wrong at this point. Get a nice wipe off the block that ends up touching the antenna. So an easy point there for Minnesota. What needs to change for Nebraska to stem this time? Well, right now they're passing this off. I think Minnesota has really put some pace and heat behind the serve. And they got rattled at the beginning of the set, and they really haven't been able to regroup since. Great job of reaching in on that right side to block, forming that triangle to seal the net. And Nebraska needs a timeout early in set four. This is what the hitting percentages have been these last couple of sets since Hugh McCutcheon went away from the 6-2. Yeah, the 5-1 has been working very well. Kylie Miller setting that 5-1 for Minnesota. 
And like I said before, you just Hugh McCutcheon is, is is just so great at taking the data and figuring out what he can do to give his team the best opportunity to win. And right now, he's telling his team to just serve tough. And with Miller running a 5-1, they look fantastic offensively. Ames' pancake kept it up for Nebraska. That reach over on the block. Ames digs it. Suns bump set. Since Kubik running for it. Rollins. Miller for Morgan. Stiverance. Samity misfires. That is a big point for Nebraska early in the set. Yeah, it's huge just for Nebraska to feel like, okay, we're, we're getting some momentum, we're playing well together. Uh, that was a big point for them. You didn't want uh, Minnesota to get too far ahead there. That would have been seven to one, so now it's uh, two six. So Nebraska happy to end that run by Minnesota. And you see it's been even if you zoom out in the entirety of the has <laughs> got a piece of it, that's wide and a point to Minnesota. So we talked about the hitting percentages and what Minnesota has done, and, and they've had Kylie Miller back. Again, if you're just tuning into this one, she got cleared only yesterday. She hasn't even practiced a ton in this month plus that she's been out. Yeah, but you can see how her team has responded to her um, being in charge of the offense, and she does so much too. It's her serving, um, it's her leadership on the court. Point you. Serving's really been the key here. They're just they're they're just going for it. There's no uh, laying back. They're just kind of serving as tough as they can and hitting their targets and changing up the serves. Right? Yeah, sometimes short, sometimes forcing the passers deep. It's keeping Nebraska on their toes, definitely. Stiverance letting out frustration. Well, and that's what Stiverance brings to this team. She is intense, and when she gets that big kill, she turns and she looks at her teammates, and she gets them pumped up. Richard Jr. from Scottsdale, Arizona, returning first-team All-American, of course, from last year. Tough serve at Kill Kelly. Stiverance. Yeah. There have been a few of those from Nebraska tonight. Yeah. Point you. That's one of those where, you know, things just aren't going their way. That's a that's a hit that she's done a million times and has had a lot of <laughs> success with. That time just getting the side of the ball and chopping it way sharp out of bounds. So Haynes goes right back to her. Miller reached up, got the net. And the point to the Huskers. This is a four here. Yeah, and I was just going to say, this is a tough rotation for Nebraska. You've got Haynes in the front row. You've got Schwarzenbach, who doesn't carry a huge offensive load on her shoulders. And then you've got Hart, or I'm sorry, Sun on the left side. Denzberger steps in. Haynes goes up for it. Now Samity through the block. A little late to form there. <laughs> yep, definitely. Well, we're going to see it again here. Nicely placed tip. But take a look at how late Sun is getting there. Samity just using her on the block. See the numbers. All around for Samity. Pittman. Talk about how important serve pass is. You're seeing it here in this set. Nebraska just out of sorts on serve receive. And Minnesota, again, from the end line, just letting it rip. Trouble again for Nebraska. Can Minnesota capitalize? Sun trying to put an end to that. Alexi Sun doing a good job of sealing the line. Take a look at this. Fast feet to the outside. Swing blocking, but reaching back in. And then just a little 
look. I like that. Back in Reagan Pittman's direction. Yeah, yeah, just kind of staring her down. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, bump set from Miller. Knuckles. Couldn't control it. And Minnesota by seven. Hart getting a ton of attempts, doing a great job of managing sets that may not be perfect. They're inside a little bit. She likes those, rips them cross court. She has been the heart and soul of this team tonight. Up to 15 kills tonight. Knuckles with issues in serve receive on that one, but Nebraska scores anyway. Nebraska always aware of where the weakest defensive player is. Pittman is really a good server, so she's going to serve and try to get points off her serve. Defensively, not as quick, and so roll shots in front of her are really difficult for her to get up. Sun serve. Service error number nine for Nebraska. Point you. Miller back to serve. again where she had so much success early on in this match this will be an interesting thing to see how she reacts and how she plays after making a few errors here we'll keep tracking Cuban 14-6 is Minnesota's lead on the comeback trail trying to even this up at two sets apiece you got a loaded Big Ten with four teams right in that top eight You've got teams at the top, Texas Pitt, Baylor, Stanford in this week's poll. And by the way, Stanford tonight, winners in a top 20 showdown of its own out in Salt Lake City, taking down number 16, Utah. And then how about Creighton in a number 12 versus number nine match, beating Marquette tonight as well. Some really good matches on this Friday night around the country. Absolutely. Great set there by Hames to force the ball to the middle to Schwarzenbach and Schwarzenbach does a great job of just putting the tip down where the defense isn't. So, nice crafty play there by Haynes to pump that ball to the middle. 14-7 now is the go for edge. Hard, a big swing. And now Cubic. Hart again. Off the block and down. Well, Hart's carrying a huge load. You can see how many times she's getting set within the rally. So she has to take big swings at the ball every time she goes up. She finds a way to score. I like what she's doing right now for her team. A senior who actually graduated early. She's only taken four credits in this her senior season. To 18 last year. She's loving it and trying to get this Gophers team on a run down the stretch headed toward the postseason. Senior night tomorrow here at the pass. Iowa coming to town on the heels of a three set loss in Madison. Morgan in the middle. Well, it's a great dig, but unfortunately just goes over the net. Got to dig that ball, be safe, take it off the net. But, uh, yeah, an overpass kill there by Minnesota. Nicely done. McGraw serves at Sun. A good pass gets Stiverns involved. And the block for Minnesota. Leading by nine now. Well, I feel like everything Minnesota is doing right now is a little faster. They're playing with a little bit more determination. And you can see on the block there, strong hands to seal the net on the slide. Doug 
by McGraw. Samity's tip. Kubik served it on a platter for Pittman. Well, the atmosphere in this place is electric. They love what they're seeing from this Minnesota team. No timeouts left for John Cook this set. So he calls on Riley Zoom, a freshman, Under Armour All-American last year from Fort Collins, Colorado to give a blow to Cubic. Doesn't have an answer yet for Nebraska. And currently right now, looking at the stats, Nebraska hitting zero, five kills, five errors. Four zero -oh run on a tough serve at Knuckles. And Zoom. Send Minnesota chasing it. Remember, Zoom now the top backup at outside hitter. Capri Davis still away from the team for Nebraska. And Cuba comes back in. You sometimes you just want to give um, a kid like Cubic a little bit of a mental break, take a couple points off. This one might be out of reach for Nebraska, but just talk to her, get her settled down. I think that's exactly what John Cook did with taking her out in the front court. Knuckles bailed out Cubic this time. Samity. When it's a free ball, wow, you gotta love it. And you gotta love it when you've got a kid like number 10 on your team. Samity just takes it and rips it. Now the third Golden Gopher in double figures with kills. Led by Hart with 16. Sun blasting away. And the point to Nebraska. But you can see how Minnesota has just upped the ante on their serve. Nothing that is, everything that's coming over the net is really hard for Nebraska's backcourt to handle. And Lexi Sun does a good job of bailing her team out of that one by a hard line shot right in the perimeter of the court. And this time, a service error. Went to Nicole Drunick there. Sub-change here, so bigger blocker for Nebraska. And a setter, as you said, Drunick is in, setting in the backcourt. And Haynes sitting right beside John Cook. Pittman powering it down. <laughs> yeah. Very strong. And it sets for Sun. Miller. Well timed dump. A great dig down the line by Samity, the All American. And then a very smart, well disguised attack there by Kylie Miller. Golden Gophers in set four. This is absolutely incredible. 24-10. With Sweet, with Knuckles, with Stiverins, with Hames yeah. all on the Nebraska bench. And Lexi Sun just wanting to compete. She does a great job of just staying in it, telling her coach and her teams, hey, we may not win this one, but I'm still going to be fighting for you. 
I like it. And now those four all come back in for Nebraska and John Cook. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's a lot of subs. <laughs> Second set point coming up for Minnesota. Audrey Plow, Mike Monaco, our BTN crew with you here at the pack. Like it might be a quicker night early on. Minnesota thinking otherwise. Ah! We're going five in Minneapolis. had a, a two minute and 30 second break after set four and I think all 230 of it Lauren Stiverance was just in that huddle John Cook wasn't even there and Lauren Stiverance was leading the charge yeah take a look at 26 right there she took control of that huddle Lauren Stiverance is fired up and is a leader and she wants her team to compete hard and believe that they can win this fifth set and you're right Mike she did not let up for a minute and you gotta love that as a coach when a a kid comes into the huddle and just takes control and says probably everything that you were going to say and probably a little more. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, set five at the PAV, top 10 matchup, huge, huge Big Ten championship hopes for both these teams and Minnesota didn't trail in set three or set four after they went to the 5-1 and then Nebraska with just 11 points in set four and John Cook emptied the bench, he had seen enough. Yeah, that was pretty humiliating for Nebraska, but this just goes to show you, you know, how good Minnesota can be when their passing game is on and their serving game is on. The tempo and location is just different when Kylie Miller is setting and they forced Nebraska to feel very uncomfortable because they made their passing just seem off. And so we'll see who can regroup, which team can stay hot. Uh, right now it's all the Gophers though in the last two sets. So we'll see if Nebraska can rebound and, and show what they can do as they played very well in the first two. Late night Big Ten Titans going at it here in the Twin Cities. Glad you are with us down the stretch. Hart. And the first point to Minnesota. Ball goes against Nebraska. Just sweep in the net there. Miller back to serve. A tough serve though by Hames, easily controlled by CeCe McGraw. I don't think we've given her enough credit for what she's done in the serve receive pattern for Minnesota tonight. Kylie Miller continue all that service pressure. Good pass from Knuckles. And Lexi Sun starts things for Nebraska. We will see what gives here with the serving of Minnesota and the serve receive of Nebraska here in set five. Alexi Sun just goes hard, middle back area of the court, middle to right back. You see it just hits Adonna Rollins off the arms and in the face. Sun serves. Raw. Eleven service errors for the Huskers. Point you. Enter dimension on serving number six, Rachel Kill Kelly. Kill Kelly serve, causing serve receive problems. Cubic trying to get back into the form she had early. So I like calling these matches like a match of attrition. <laughs> like you reduce a team's individual strength and effectiveness by keeping the pressure on them. And so it just keeps flipping back and forth in this one. Um, these are the, the Big Ten matches that you hope to see with these two big competitors. So similar for Nebraska to how this road trip began last year. Although the first leg of it last year was in Madison. Samity. Stiverance. Hot kill Kelly in the back. Yeah, so at this point, you know, when you're playing in the fifth set, you've got to really be disciplined on your block and backcourt defense has got to step up. The swings are going to be formidable to deal with and you've got to have defensive courage on your side of the net. Hey, 
Kane sets Stivrens. And then with coverage, Kubik. Says there was a touch, doesn't get that call. Remember, John Cook gets a challenge back here in set five. And he will use it. Had to use up all three before we even got to the midway point of set three. Yeah, I thought there was a touch right away. I thought I saw the ball change directions off, change direction off the blocker's hands, but we'll see how this call goes. We had a few earlier where we thought there were touches. And is there a net violation? Yeah, yep. clearly a net violation, yes. That's the second net violation that has been seen on the Minnesota side of things that has been challenged by John Cook, which won't make him thrilled either. Right, yeah, I you know, I saw two things there, a touch and a net violation, so. <laughs> and that'll make him doubly frustrated yeah, exactly. that he went to the green card for that. Early on in set five, these two going back and forth. You know, when things get tight, as they probably will in this fifth set, you really have to stay calm under these pressure situations. Let's take a look at this one again. I feel like this is the best angle here. Let's see, good swing block. Both hands, both hitter or blocker's hands up and over. Very clear. Yeah. So you said stay calm. H how do you do that? Well, I think it comes from your training. And I think, you know, coaches put these girls in this situation in practice so that when they're faced with this type of adversity and faced with these um, difficult situations, they've been there before and they've responded in practice. Um, certainly, we've seen Nebraska a tight one against Penn State and uh, coming out of that one with a W. So uh, we'll see if they can you know, win on the road here. It would be a tremendous challenge, especially having not played so great in the third and fourth set. I'm not sure what's taking so long on this one. It seemed pretty obvious to us. We made a call right away, didn't we, Mike? Yes, yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's just getting the technology to, yeah. to act the way you want it to. And you talk about being calm. We had a, an interesting discussion with Hugh McCutcheon about that today. They start their practices. Every practice, every serve and pass, they've done it throughout this season. First year they've done it with about five minutes of meditation. Uh -huh. They have an app that's a very popular app called Headspace. So you have another look at the touch, the net violation. Take your pick. And what should be a Nebraska point. Call was in the net. That's the call he made. So as we saw it, he saw it. Point goes to Nebraska. John Cook gets the point. Maybe a couple minutes after he had hoped for it. But a 3-0 run nonetheless for Nebraska here in this fifth set. Knuckles. Miller sets Samity. Those two have had a good connection when Miller's been healthy this year. Morgan stayed right there on Cubic. Morgan has nice hang time. She read the tip, hangs, hangs, and then slams it down. You see Nebraska's players all in great coverage. They're all down low, no one going for the ball. 4-3 Huskers. And McGraw serves. Sweet to the corner. Minnesota's block jumps with the setter here. Take a look at this. Big jump. Setter's back row. You don't need to jump with her. All the Big Ten eyes on this one. Late on your Friday night. Megan Miller serve at Kilkelly. With Minnesota out of system. Cubic. Down for Nebraska. 
And what an answer to them after they didn't even have a lead in sets three or four. Yeah, great job by Haynes. This time she is front row. She rotated to the front, jump sets, holds the block, pushes it all the way outside, and gives her left side a nice opportunity to swing for a point. You know, one thing that John Cook has said this year about Maddie Kubik, who right now has three kills just in set five, she's done a really good job as a freshman from one set to another. If she has a bad set, a bad game in there, bouncing back and the very next set. Well, you have to be or you're never going to survive in the Big Ten because things aren't always going to go your way. You're going to have huge blocks in front of you. Uh, you're going to have to play against great defensive players, and sometimes those kills aren't going to be easy to come by. She seemed to have her way against Minnesota in the first two sets. Sets three and four, not so much, but here she is in the fifth doing a, a pretty good job. And this fifth one is far from over, though. We're going to have to see which team plays consistently well here to the end of the 15th point. And even with two weekends left, this regular season is far from over. You can update the Wisconsin record. They had a straight sets win earlier tonight in Madison against Iowa. You see what they have left. Penn State won already once earlier this week. They've got Rutgers this weekend before hosting the huge showdown with your border battle teams in State College next weekend, and everyone's still in this. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you know, this one is going to be really, really big for these two teams because you certainly, I mean, every win matters, every loss matters, so it's magnified now in the last two weekends of the Big Ten season. Of course, for Minnesota, the only two losses that they have in the Big Ten are both to Wisconsin. Got swept in Madison in mid-October, then here last Thursday in four sets right here on BTN. Taylor Morgan is <laughs> always loose. <laughs> Even with her team in this spot in set five. Miller serving. Samity blocked. And as fired up as we have seen Maddie Kubik tonight. Well, that's a huge block. When you are able to stuff block, essentially the best hitter on the other side of the net, one-on-one -on -one even, well, that's big time right there. The true freshman from Iowa. A free ball now. Stiverance. And Nebraska by five now. A 7-1 run to get to this midway point of set five. Oh. We went to the end of the fourth set, went to that commercial break. We sat here and said to each other off air, how does Nebraska turn this around? Lauren Stiverin said, hey, I, I got some ideas about this. Again, this was two and a half minutes straight of her with her team. And just look at how everybody is dialed in. Everyone's focused on her. And whatever she's saying, I mean, she's just that energy, emotionally charged, vested. Say what you will. That kid's a leader and the reason why this team has rebounded in the fifth. Yeah, it's a team without a senior on the roster for the first time in program history. She is a redshirt junior. And she's got such a leadership role. And she's got Nebraska up by six now with Kubik there. Well, I would never rule out a Hugh McCutcheon team uh, if they can just string together a couple points here out of the timeout. Make Nebraska think about it a little bit. I think this point out of the timeout is critical for Minnesota. Nebraska gets that 10th point, you know, the psychological advantage clearly goes to Nebraska. It's a big gap of points to try to make up when it's only going to 15. Well, meanwhile, you talk about Nebraska, you hear coaches say that John Cook's teams get better as the years go along, or as the season goes along. The last five years in November and December is the record for the Cornhuskers, and you got your two national title years in there. They were perfect down the stretch in those seasons and almost three years to the day last time they lost in November. Yeah, and you know, when I look at that, I just think, yes, John Cook is an amazing co uh, coach. But I also feel a little bit for these coaches that are, are championship level coaches because the pressure to maintain that level yeah. of play is so high. 
and and fans kind of take for granted that they're going to win championship after championship after championship but there's so much involved and so much invested um, so much uh, that these coaches have to deal with so to have that stat uh, doing so well your win-loss record in, in November or December and on just shows program that he's been able to have for this Husker team. Yeah, and other coaches aren't going to give him a, a ton of sympathy, but it is yeah. a, a boatload of pressure that you stare down every single year, and it's the pressure that Matty Kubik has jumped into this year and going through some struggles in those last couple of sets and turning it around here in set five. Miller still serving at Rollins this time. Minnesota all out of system during this run. Kubik Again for the Huskers. Well, it came down to that nice, tough serve. And they, again, like to go to Rollins when she's in that left back position. You see that they pinched her all the way to the sideline, give her a very small area of the court to pass. Pearson look from Hugh McCutcheon searching for answers. McGraw fouled Miller, and Pittman is blocked. Look at how disciplined, loaded Nebraska's block is. Knees bent, hands high. They know it's coming quick. Quick jump over, sealing the net. Miller again, this time at Pittman, a little shorter. Comes all the way over. Stiverin sets Cubic. Man. Everything coming up, Huskers in set five. Ed Kubik just feeling it tonight. She's just going for it, but hitting smart. High, getting her feet to the ball, especially on those five and five sets. Hitting smart, never low seam. And Stephanie Samity to the bench here. With Minnesota down 12-3, Idi Miabe comes back in. Hadn't seen her since the shift out of the 6-2. This, Rollins, yeah. this time misses the mark. At this point, Huma Kutchin doesn't, you know, can't burn another timeout. There is no more timeout. So he's trying to it, put subs in to slow down the momentum of the game a little bit. They can get a point, maybe build off that. But at this point in the game, 13-3, Nebraska, boy, they are certainly very close to winning this one. We've forgotten what Megan Miller has done leading this run, which reaches 10-0 with her serving. And getting a little luck. Sometimes you're good and sometimes you're lucky. <laughs> and sometimes you're both. <laughs> it is match point just like that for the Huskers on the road, looking for what is arguably their best win of the season. Haynes. to end it with her seventh kill of set five and Nebraska's a winner on the road. And look at Lauren Stiverens in Cubic's face. She is delighted with the performance of her team in this fifth set. What a huge fifth set for Nebraska. 15-3 over Minnesota. Lauren Stiverens got the team together. She's got her arm around the star freshman who was so good when Nebraska was so good early on in this match and a thunderous finish for the Huskers. Yeah, I just, I love that it came on the shoulders of the freshman that we thought needed to play well and did play well. And look at that shot, what a game winner. What a win for the Huskers. Cubic in utter joy. Stiverin still fiery at the finish. And a win for Nebraska after they took the first two, lost the next two, and they win it in five tonight. And we're joined now by Lauren Stiverin's. Lauren, first thing we got to know, what did you say to your team? We saw you talking for so long there before set five. <laughs> um, yeah, I got to talk. Like, Jalen was trying to talk strategy, but I was like, Jalen, at the end of the day, like, guys, we're so much better than the way we've been playing and like we played some of the best volleyball we played in the first two sets and 
kind of to see us like start to go inside by ourselves and not play as a team those next two is like kind of sad and that's not how we do things at Nebraska so I just said like the only reason we're losing right now is because we're not doing the things that we can control. We can control our energy, our eye contact, our communication, and that's where we were lacking. So I just said we got to go back to basics and play Nebraska volleyball. Well, Lauren, I absolutely loved your leadership. What did you think of the freshman Cubic? How's she doing for you so far this season? What did you think of her performance tonight? <laughs> that girl's an all-star. She gives me goosebumps just thinking about her. Um, yeah, I don't have enough good words to say about her. She busts her butt every single day in the gym, and it really showed today. She really took over that team. And when she blocked Steph in that last set, um, I said, Matt, I turned to her and I said, Maddie, you just won us the game. That was the game changer. We needed that, and she stepped up big time for us today. Well, Lauren, congratulations. Uh, a long one here tonight. Not done for the weekend. We'll let you go. Yeah. Enjoy. Congrats. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Lawrence Difference, you gotta love that leadership, like she said, and what she said. Hey, hey, Jalen Reyes, our defensive guy, it's not about strategy right now. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's so much to be said when you've got a player that takes ownership like that and takes control and has the respect of her teammates that they're all gonna listen to her. It's so impressive. Well, that is it from Maturi Pavilion, John Cook, Lawrence Difference and company. Winners tonight in five sets.